so I've been thinking about this the last few days now, and I'm curious what A.D. Robles thinks. But um, Ooh, man. so, okay, so we get something wrong um, and, and we should repent, right? And whatever context yeah. it was that we send in, that, that should be the, the same context um, that we repent in, right? So like if I sin yes, against my wife privately, I, I, you know, I, I need to go to her privately and ask for her forgiveness and acknowledge my sin, repent before the Lord and repent before um, my wife. Uh, but I, I don't have to, you know, uh, post it on Twitter or something like that. It doesn't, you know, if it's a private grievance, it can be privately dealt with. And it, except, you know, of course, you know, in my case, being a pastor, if the grievance was something that, that would disqualify oh, sure. me from eldership, then uh, 1 Timothy chapter 5, right? Rebuke, um, rebuke those elders that persist in sin before them all. So then it does merit, a private sin could merit a public rebuke if a guy's in in that position of, of leadership, and it's an egregious sin. All that being said, though, the context that we repent in is the context that we send in. So guys who send publicly by telling them, you know, you got to get the jab because because Jesus tells you to, because like this is Christian law, you know, that, that that's, if you said that publicly, like you, you need to publicly own that. But that brings me to the question, which is um, certainly there needs to be repentance. Sure. But for leaders, I'm, I'm wondering like, because, because... <laughs> Yeah. Some people think that this is funny that we're even doing this episode, right? Like, like when did COVID come out? It's been 900 days, <laughs> right? Like, like, you know what I mean? This wasn't like two weeks ago, yes. two months ago. It's not even two years ago now. It's two and a half years. It's 900 days. And so here's my thing is like, okay, like forgiveness um, belongs to a category of love, and charity, we could place that in that category. Um, but but leadership is not a charity, right? Like the office of elder is not a charity. The, the president of a seminary is not a charity, right? Like the, the Bible has a real category for charity and love and forgiveness. And these things are free because we've been freely loved and freely given to and freely forgiven in the gospel. So the gospel is the basis, it's the foundation for us forgiving our, our debtors as we, you know, as God forgives us our debts. Um, but, but this people need to understand, because this is one of the things is, is people mix categories all the time, right? This is mm -hmm. what, what people do with the Democrat party all the time is like, well, you know, um, yeah, Republicans care for the unborn, you know, but Democrats care for people once they are born. And it's like, okay, but wait sure. a second, but is government supposed to care for them? Right. Right. Like, like government has been, it's, you know, it's like the, the old saying, like you, you had one job. You know, like the government has one yeah. job, get, kill bad guys. You know what I mean? Like that's their job. You know, not, it's not welfare. Um, that falls on the household. When the household fails, it falls on uh, the church. If that person is qualified and faithful and all those kinds of things. Um, and, and, and then it never falls on the government. It's, it's family first, then the church for those who are faithful and never uncle Sam, uh, uncle Sam keeps wanting to be daddy Sam, but he's, he's not, he's just supposed to be the crazy uncle that, um, that, that takes a sword and kills bad guys, you know? And so we mix categories. And so my point is like, when it comes to eldership, I've seen people do this, like where an elder gets caught in some kind of egregious sin, but he owns it, you know, like, like even like the Chandler thing. And I don't know if it was egregious because that was so weird. Cause it's like, um, he's absolutely mm -hmm. not, uh, not disqualified, but, uh, it was a disqualifying yeah. sin. You know, it's I like, watched your video on that. Yeah. Yeah. Just ridiculous. You know, I'm just Very like, what, what is going on? So anyways, <laughs> Um, but, but in the case of Chandler, I, I don't know if it was egregious. I have no idea what it is. Nobody, you know, nobody's talking about it, but also everyone should know about it. And so whatever. But my point is with that, I saw a ton of people coming out and saying like, good, you know, like, um, I, I don't like his woke stuff, but I'm really proud of him on this point. I really impressed, um, because pe people like when people own something, it's just like what I said earlier, the guy on Twitter who said, Hey, I've got a lot of people and and, and I found myself immediately like, good on you, man, way to go. And you just immediately increase in respect for someone when they own their mistakes, you know? And mm -hmm. now Chandler, mm -hmm. I kind of feel like his elders probably had like a gun at his back, you know, making him. <laughs> so I don't know how much of that was voluntary, but the point right. is, um, people, people are so quick. Um, and, and then they, you know, Christians will, will apply the gospel. This is, you know, this is gospel you know, like, uh, Christ forgives us. We should forgive Chandler, you know, and, uh, get him back mm -hmm. in the pulpit, you know, like, like mm -hmm. forgive him. Don't be a Pharisee. Don't, it's like, well, wait a second. Th this is not a forgiveness. Cat there's forgiveness, which belongs to love, but then there's discernment and qualifications, which belongs to trust. 
And those are two different mm -hmm. categories. Mm -hmm. You can forgive someone. Um, they, I'll see you in heaven. You're a brother in Christ. I love you. I can have friendship with you, um, but you you can't be my pastor. You yeah. can't be a yeah. leader. You've got us, you know. And so my question is this: so so we want guys to own it. And you're calling out Andrew T. Walker, and and hopefully he owns it. And I'm not saying this specifically to him because I, I don't know him, but I'm just sure. saying in general, if some of these guys own it, my question is. But what yeah. happens when you own something 900 days late? <laughs> yeah, because for definitely. me, then it's like, okay, so there's repentance. I can feel good about calling you a brother. But but I would like the leaders in Christ church to have a little bit of more discernment than mm -hmm. than than cuz cuz literally to lead just 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 at a practical level, leading implies that you're ahead of the crowd. But if you're coming to conclusions on, mm -hmm. on, on weighty matters that have affected the globe, if you're coming to conclusions and able to apply God's words to these cultural political matters, and you're coming to those conclusions 900 days after the fact, and it also happens to be the same day that everyone else that you're leading also came to that conclusion, <laughs> then are right, you a right. leader? What do you yeah. think about that? Yeah, well, I don't think, I, I think that you, you, you definitely aren't, at least in that area. I think I think it depends on the person, you know, what what you're talking, who you're talking about, what what you know, what they said, what they're doing, um, how they repent. You know what I mean? Because because a lot of guys will just do the sorry, you know, I I I, I, sh I didn't know, you know, I didn't have the right data. Sorry, and like you know, that's really not going to cut it because like again, it doesn't matter what the data was. Like you actually lied about what the the Bible says here. Right, you try right. to you put this yoke on people, right? So. Um, it all depends on the details. Like, uh, but the thing is though, like, even if like, like Andrew T. Walker, right. As far as I know, he's not a pastor. I think he's a professor, just a professor and that's it. Um, you know, I would never take an Andrew T. Walker ethics class. That doesn't make any sense because <laughs> right. this is the area that he just failed in like right, so miserably right. and spectacularly. So um, I wouldn't take it like, I, like, I'm not saying he should be fired, but like, I can't imagine anyone after this being like, Oh yeah, you will. I, you know, I'm going to get my ethics per, you know, lessons from you. But the thing is, we, you know, that doesn't mean that he's not a bad, he's a bad guy. Like, it doesn't right, mean that yeah. like, you can't learn from him in other areas. But in this area, when it comes to like uh, high emotion, you know, political, um, you know, you know, psyop level type stuff where everything's kind of happening all quickly and at, all at once. And they're putting this propaganda pressure on you. Like, you know, honestly, you probably should just sit it out. Right. It, you know, and maybe, maybe think about it a little bit before you make your judgments before you, you know what I mean? Like, and I'm not saying you didn't think about this, but it's just like, the, you know, e, e, there's a difference between forgiving someone and then instantly trusting them in the same areas where they just failed. Right. You know what I mean? Like if you're exactly. pastor, if you're, if, if you're, let's forget about pastors for a second. Like if you're, if you're, if you're a Christian friend, you know, fails, you know, he goes to the bar and he picks up a girl and, you know, he sleeps with her or whatever. Like, you don't like go hang out with him at the bar like a few weeks later. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like he probably shouldn't be there. You can't be trusted there. You should probably maybe do something else. Does nope. he have the freedom to go to a bar? Is it, is it unchristian to go to a bar? No, but you know, you got to protect yourself sometimes. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like right. I'm not saying you can't repent and be fine. Andrew T. Walker could repent. He could have this great thing and he could be fine going forward because he learned his lesson that the government propaganda is not to be trusted. That could definitely happen. Yes. But, but what I'm saying is like, it, it just can't be like, everything's all good. If you give me the, the, yeah, sorry, you know, mm -hmm. you know, uh, how, how could I have known? A lot of guys are doing that. How could I have known? I just did the best with the data I had. No, you didn't. Right. You failed with the data you had. That's right. the problem. Right. No, I completely <clears throat> agree because we all had the all same depends. data. And we didn't we all have all, the same data. And we didn't all come to the same conclusions. And it's not just because some of us are, you know, right wing extremist, you know, MAGA mm -hmm. Republican, whatever, like conspiracy theorists. Um, no, like like there are very sensible people um who just who without being an epidemiologist, you know, just mm -hmm. were able to say, well, wait a second. Like by 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 your own data, by your own admission, um, like how many people under the age of 65 are dying? Right. And, yeah. and, you know, and like the CDC comes out and says like that, you know, that uh, the average person dying um, of COVID is, is 80, I, I believe it was 84 years old or 86 years old. Uh, they yeah. also came out and said that the average person dying um, of COVID had 
not one, not two, not three, but four simultaneous, four comorbidities, right? So, so you can look at that and say, okay, like, um, so, so who do I, like, you're saying that, that me and, and all of my kids, uh, we need to get um, a vaccine that requires two doses. And then every like five, six months, a booster vaccine. Um, and, and we need to do this in order to protect a, a very small sliver of the population, 86 year olds with four comorbidities. Um, yeah. c- could we just not hang out with 86 year olds with four, four comorbidities? Right. And, and is that, can we do that instead? And people were asking that question, which is a really reasonable question. And, yes. and they were, it's not just that like we were being ignored. We, we were being, um, we were being demeaned. We were being yeah, slandered, accused as hateful. And yeah. And so anyway, Conspir- conspiracy theorists, all the, all the whole nine yards, hateful conspiracy theorists. You want to kill grandma. You know, you just, uh, you know, you listen to Tucker Carlson too much, all that kind of stuff. Right. Right. But here's the thing. I don't think at every single, single pastor, I, I don't know if this is what you're kind of getting at, but I don't think every single pastor that pushed the vaccine, um, as loving your neighbor as yourself, that they need to resign. Yeah, However, that's what I'm getting at. Okay, so you're giving me an answer? I don't think so. Okay. Not every single one. However, there's going to have to be some, like there's a lot expected of a pastor when they screw up so royally. And like you have to really, you have to, you're going to have to, to borrow a big Eva term, you're going to have to really lean into that repentance and demonstrate what it really is because it, it can't, it cannot just be sort of like, I'm sorry I got caught kind of thing. Because we've all been there. I mean, you're a pastor, Joel. You, you, you know, like the, when you're talking to someone and they repent, basically only because they got caught. Right. Like, you know, the difference between that and heartfelt repentance. Right. Yep. You've been there. We've all been there. You don't have to be a pastor to know that. Like right. there's certain times you talk to someone and you know that they're really broken up about their sin and other times where you're just like, well, they're kind of like annoyed that they got caught. And so they'll, they'll repent. I feel like that, that we're going to probably have to see the difference as it plays out to really make the judgment here. But some Amen. of these guys will never repent. They just won't ever do it. Right. Some of them, they're just going to memory hole it, you know, and we're never going to yeah. see, you know, like, like their past things that they said, we'll never see the light of day again. And, and the reason why guys do that is because um, it works. Like it yeah, works. It does. Oh my goodness. Right. It's effective. You know, and um, you just, you know, you just never, ever, 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 ever bring it up again, you know, and, and which, you know, for the record, even me personally, it's like, nobody comes out of the womb with perfect theology and nobody's, um, go, goes into ordination with perfect theology, right? Like there's a minimum bottom line, biblically, you must be able to teach. Uh, but you would hope that a pastor who, who has been or an ordained minister of the gospel that, uh, 20 years into his ministry will have more refined doctrine than the day that he was ordained, which means what? Um, it means that he has reformed in his theology. He, he's meaning that, that that a guy who's been preaching for 20 years should be able to look back and say, I was wrong about X, Y, and Z. You know, I, yeah. I can do that with certain doctrines that, that I was I was wrong about. Like I used to be a continuationist. I, I'm not anymore, but I was. Um, I, that's, I, that's how I was raised. And, and I was really into Piper at the time, John Piper and Sam Storm. So I was a continuationist in that light, you know, not like Benny Hinn, but, you know, but like kind of the, you know, the, the trying to be soft about it, but, but eventually moved out of that. So, so I'm not saying that I've never been wrong, but I think there's a difference when um, it's, it's, and, and, and you can make a strong argument. Like, well, you were a continuationist. Well, like, did you, you were holding the door open for there being new revelation? Um, what, what kinds of evils can that breed and what is the harm? And all, so like, you can make a strong argument. Like that is a big, you, you were, that's not a small thing, Joel. Like that, that's, that's a big, and I would say, yeah, you're right. It's not a small thing. That's a big thing. So it's, it's not even so much the degree of, um, I was wrong about the vaccine and told and, and bound people's conscience to inject their bodies with something that's mm-hmm. never going to leave with this m- mRNA, you know, technology, it's never going to leave. Uh, it's not just like we're saying like this, this category is such a big category to me. It's, it's more so, um, it's, it's like, it's not like, um, I, I just was misinformed because I was following this theologian instead of this theologian. No, it's, uh, the thing that you were following was government propaganda. The thing that you mm-hmm. were following was, um, f- f- pharmacy, you know, like, like when I was a continuationist, my point is I had a biblical argument for it. 
Now I would look now and say it was unbiblical, but my but what I'm saying is I was using the Bible to support my view. I really thought that the Bible said that. I, I really believed like like it was, you know, it seemed a lot clearer. Whereas these guys, it's not just this one area. The same guys who are pushing love your neighbor by getting the vax are the same guys who on their Instagram account you saw pictures of them at the BLM rallies. Their churches are closed down, but they're at a BLM rally in the summer of love, mm-hmm. you know, 2020. And so I guess for me that that would be the thing is not just are you wrong on this one thing, but over the last two years, mm-hmm. like were like were you silent? And 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 writing articles about how now's not the time to beat our chest when Roe is overturned, and mm-hmm. and were you you know uh, you know repeating the BLM you know rhetoric, and you know this Hobbit is getting vaccinated like at that point yeah. it's to me it just shows it it's it's enough <clears throat> pieces of the puzzle to say like it it it's a bigger picture that says yeah this guy is just he's a water carrier for the left this guy's yeah. this guy's just you know he's he's just a pundit he's not he's not a minister. Oh, hi. I didn't see you there. Thanks for sticking around. I've got an important announcement to make. That's the Theonomy and Postmillennialism Conference. 2023, May 5th, 6th, and 7th, the Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, Theonomy and Postmillennialism. We've got the speakers that we've already had lined up. That's Dr. James White, Dr. Joseph Boot, Dr. Gary DeMar, non-doctor Pastor Joel Webin. But we also have a bonus speaker, and that is Dale Partridge from Real Christianity. Perhaps you've heard of him. If not, you should start listening to his podcast. It's fantastic. Dale Partridge is going to be joining our team. We're going to have live panels on Friday night and Saturday night where you'll be able to write in questions and get them answered. We're also going to have a catered barbecue Texas style barbecue meal on Friday that's a part of your registration for fee. All that is covered. So you need to get there. This is how you do it. Go and register right now at rightresponseconference.com. Again, that's rightresponseconference.com. God bless.